Dark Skies takes place in the 60s, and it's all about historical events reinterpreted through the eyes of an alien conspiracy. So those stories, they're all true. Well, nothing is all true. It depends on who you talk to. As a consequence, most of what we know about the way history went down in the last 60 to 70 years has been colored by that, and yet it's been covered up. You don't keep the President of the United States in the dark about this. It's wrong. So everything that you know about our American culture was not inspired by Americans, but in fact by either aliens or the government trying to suppress the information of the aliens. It didn't change history, it just gave it a little twist. I don't know who your friends are, but um, Air Force is out there far more powerful. That's the essence of the, of the series. A good family friend of ours at uh, when I was just getting out of high school, was working at a very high level in the Reagan administration. And uh, one night, he took me aside and was telling me some of the things he was doing in the government, and he was going to get us a White House tour and everything, and um, ended up, you know, telling me some pretty shattering stories. And in particular, he knew that I had always been into science fiction and fantasy and comic books and whatnot, and very casually just threw out there that aliens were real, they're here, and I've seen them. The story goes on to much greater detail because at the time I was just absolutely shocked. And, and this is a person I grew up with and I completely trusted and, and um, he just rocked my world. And I have not told a lot of people the story, but I, I made this kind of connection with Bryce over lunch and realized how deeply he was into UFOs. And I said, well, I have to tell you the story then. I thought either that's true, in which case this is phenomenal and an incredible story and I'll have to do something with it, or I also thought, if it's not true, he's a hell of a storyteller and we should be working together. <laughs> so we decided to work together and we started talking over UFOs. I had been working on something called Majestic, I think, at the time, and Brent came in one day and said, I got a better title for you, Dark Skies. And that kind of stuck. And then for an entire month, it, we... we we were at my office at Universal, and you would come by every day, and we would just work on, on the notebook that became this thing that we ended up selling it with. And we just worked. We didn't tell anybody what we were doing. It was perfect Dark Skysian development, where you, you do it, you don't tell anybody, and uh, you go a little bit insane. And that kind of worked. Usually, you know, you're, you're developing something, and you start hyping your agents and your lawyers and getting people excited about something, and we went completely off the grid. Totally. And, and had this whole thing, totally and by the time it. anyone heard about it, it was through this top secret briefing book that they had to read, you know, like a hundred pages of content. It wasn't just a TV pitch, it was a whole world. In the days when we were putting together the briefing book, um, we were working in a vacuum, which was very exhilarating, but there was a bit of madness going on. You know, we, we envisioned this big epic series um, and we just kept feeding our own imaginations with, well, if we open up that thing in history, let's open up this and let's say this. And we decided once we kind of went down that rabbit hole, well, let's just come out with the whole five-year vision. You know, I mean, this was in reaction to other shows that felt like they were just making it up as they went along. We said, well, let's do the antithesis. Let's come out with a whole blueprint. Right. So we've got a big epic show. We can actually prove to people that we've thought this through. And, but what it meant was, in the span of a month or so, thinking out five seasons, which is a lot to do. And, and we just kept falling in love with the idea of, well, let's put more details, because again, we had history to mine from. I mean, I remember seeing this thing. I still have it. I have that Dark Skies Bible that he handed to me and said, this is top secret. And it was basically, it spelled out the five seasons. And I thought, these guys, are brilliant. They have captured an idea that really was ahead of its time. It was sort of out of the box. At some point we started realizing we're gonna put all of this out there and then people are gonna know where it goes. So we're gonna have to put so we're gonna we, have to put certain versions out there to get people to go, well what's the truth? What's the truth? You know what blows my mind still today? If you look at this original briefing document, the timeline goes from 75 million BC to, which admittedly was not part of our series, at least for a while, uh, to 2020. Yeah. So th that's kind of a lot of extra credit. Yeah. I don't know that we ever got the extra credit for doing it, but... 
Well, you know, well, we one certainly thing, did it. One thing you're always asked to do when you're developing a show is they say, well, you know, come up with some outlines for what a, an episode would be, just to show that there's actually something there. So we said, well, we actually have millions of years. <laughs> I think, but you know what? Ideas. We did that for a reason. We knew that the the thing that we were pitching was so outlandish mm -hmm. and so outrageous that conventionally uh, it would just be rejected, and people would go, "Well, I, you know what? It's a great concept. This thing about the Kennedy assassination, you know, it's but it's a one-off. You know, you get away with it once, and that's it." So we sort of felt that that it, it was important for us to prove to people that it wasn't a one-off. That, that there were lots and lots of stories. So we sort of accepted the, in advance the skepticism that might, might have greeted us. And that's why the notebooks were so overwhelming. They were overwhelming because we felt that the opposition would be overwhelming and we had to defeat them on the field of battle. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a preemptive strike. It was, a bold Bef preemptive Before they strike. could start doubting anything, we overwhelmed them with a vision that could not be refuted. History is an extremely important part of Dark Skies, not just because it's interesting, but because it gave us a way to tell the story in a totally different way. What I fundamentally loved about the pilot that was successful in the first half of the series was visiting historical events week by week and putting our two heroes into the mix to find the truth in a situation. There's a whole genre of alien invasion uh, movies and, and television series that have gone on before where it's primarily battling the invasion. We wanted to add an element to it that made it compelling in its own right, and that was history for us. The level of writing and the forward thinking of how they were able to tie in actual historical events and put a twist on it to include this suspected alien invasion was brilliant. Kind of in the early stages it was, let's do Forrest Gump meets War of the Worlds. Let's do a complete revisionist history of the 20th century as if aliens really existed. And that kind of opened the door to all sorts of possibilities. Freeze it right there. That's Steele behind the cowboy, two feet from Oswald when he got shot. It's a very high concept, but at the same time, it's all rooted in real history and logical ideas about why or how things happen, things that aren't actually explained generally. The best ones are the ones that are left a bit of a mystery, like the assassination of JFK. We all really don't know exactly what happened, so it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. In life, President Kennedy had inspired me to a higher standard. I resolved that his death would have no lesser effect. The enemy was out there. They had claimed our leader but the war was far from over. It just allowed us a point of view into a wealth of pre-existing material where we'd go in and say, okay, this is what everyone thinks happened. What's our dark skies take? And we could go backwards and forwards in history and start applying that to everything. That's one of the things you're always looking for when you're breaking you know, TV episodes is, I need some traction. I need something to get right. me going here. That became our franchise is that we just went in and mined history for all of these interesting incidents and put a dark sky spin on it. Mission Control, we are in contact with the Ranger. We have reception with signal and are sending its special delivery to you. Gentlemen, Mission Control is in a state of lockdown until everyone has been debriefed. I loved visiting these times in our history it was fun to do, and it was educational for me, and I also think it was entertaining. Every week I was like, well, how's this gonna be? Well, I get to be in Haight-Ashbury, oh my gosh! You know, I get to be in these times. It was, it was sort of thrilling personally to experience that. I've had people tell me that, uh, yeah, I love Dark Skies. I mean, the alien stuff was fascinating, but I just love the nostalgic ride. Sir, Mr. Kennedy, I want to apologize for ever dragging you and your brother into this. The president would never accept that apology. Neither will I. One of the reasons, by the way, we wanted to start with uh, Kennedy and, and with the 60s was just sufficient time had passed that Kennedy had become mythology, not, not a real flesh and blood right. guy, and it was okay to sort of have fun with 
the, the Kennedy assassination. To the average member of the audience, the Kennedy assassination was like the Lincoln assassination. That's mm -hmm. certainly true today. It, you know, if you talk to any kids, it's like Lincoln, Kennedy, whatever. Right. A, a dead president. The other opportunistic thing about the Kennedy assassination was that, you know, despite what the Warren Commission said, a lot of people never believed the truth had come out. So there was still an opening right. for an, another dramatic interpretation of what really happened behind the scenes for that assassination. And um, we felt like, well, no one has come out with that theory. <laughs> but, and, but, but what we really were trying to do at the very beginning that, that got us excited when mm -hmm. we started to develop this UFO series together, we said, wait a minute. The two biggest conspiracies that people have think are going on right now in mm -hmm. conspiracy theory would be the Kennedy assassination, clearly a major conspiracy. UFO cover-up, clearly a major conspiracy. What if we put them together into the granddaddy yes. of all conspiracies, and we call the, you know, the, the unification theory of conspiracy to put Kennedy and UFOs together? And honestly, to this day, I still have to pinch myself that, that an American network uh, in an American uh, production studio would give us millions of dollars to, <laughs> to make a two-hour movie that suggests that Kennedy and UFOs are tied into the same overarching... I, I, st right. I can't believe that. In the wake of Dark Skies, you actually can now go on some UFO sites and forums and whatnot and see that people are saying, you know, there is some evidence that links aliens to, to Kennedy's assassination. It's become... Something where once you put that theory out there, people start saying, oh yeah, that's, an, well, that's a legitimate theory. When we were doing Dark Skies, the first majestic uh, documents had leaked out. Uh, it was basically the Eisenhower briefing memo uh, that was leaked in 1984 that was a briefing memo for Dwight Eisenhower in 1952. And that's kind of the, the wellhead of the conspiracy with mm -hmm. Majestic. But what was interesting is that there were new documents that came out in 2000, a whole slew of new Majestic documents. So this is after Dark Skies has been canceled for three years. These documents come out, also Majestic documents, and they are about Kennedy. Some of them are about Kennedy. And Marilyn Monroe, yeah, who who we tied in yeah. as well in the in the War and Omission episode. Turn it off. Turn it off. Yes, sir. This can be authenticated as having been filmed on the day Miss Monroe so tragically died. There is a copy at another location. There were two parallel tracks of research being done, and I was. History was interesting to me, but with Bryce, it was part of his life and his upbringing. So he had a wealth of information um, about just general history, as well as um, a real immersion in a lot of cultural events we were going to be deconstructing. Well, we differ in one respect, which I almost hate to admit, because I lived through some of those events, and, and um, so I, I actually remember, you know, what happened when Kennedy died and how I felt. and. You were just born, so I don't think you ha yeah. did remember that. So, so there's that. Uh, my father was a history teacher, so history is very important. And and one of my little passions came in really happy, uh, ha happily uh, coincided with our dark skies research, which was collecting Time and Newsweek magazines, because that allowed us to really, you know, history books are about the big picture, and you get the trends and all that. But what, what happened in those magazines, you'd find all the different things that were happening at the same time in detail and what people were saying. And we were able to just constantly match those up with UFO events and find details. I mean, there are people who watch our show and, and still say, boy, they got that wrong, that song's not right or whatever. But overall, it's meticulously researched. If you look at this crowd, these guys can turn out to be bigger than Elvis. You've got a thing for these guys, don't you? Well, they're kind of cute. We also both had a, a real interest in UFOs. So he had read a bunch of books, and he has a very impressive UFO library. Um, I have something smaller, and mine's more esoteric. But I think between us, right. we had kind of covered the basis, and we had a pretty good knowledge. And what we started doing was we started saying, OK, here are all of these recorded events in history, as we know it, and here are all of these recorded events in the UFO history. And let's just look for synergistic opportunities to start marrying them together. 
And there are so many famous events in, in you know, UFO history and certainly lots of cultural touchstones throughout you know, the 20th century that we were able to just find all of these great little inflection points to say, okay, well, this happened about this time that this was going on. Let's say that they're connected somehow. A good classic for us is, is To Pray in Darkness, which uh, it takes place during the New York Power Blackout of 1965, which happened the day before Dorothy Kilgallen died, which is alleged to have been potentially influenced by UFOs because to, to cause the blackout. Sometimes it all just came together. <laughs> Everyone knows what Roswell is now or what it represents to people, but it was our opinion that if Roswell was the crash of a flying saucer or an unidentified flying object or even two of them in 1947, if we don't know about it and yet it happened, well then, as we said in the series, history is a lie. There's truth and then there's truth. If you really want to tell the American people the real truth about this, we're going to be at war, nuclear war, almost immediately. There are other ways to fight, sir, and keep the Cold War cold. I think neither of us would argue that everything in dark skies is true, but, but the underlying essence of it is true, which is if you want to look at uh, history since the late 40s and you start to think about the fact that contact with another intelligence has occurred and is occurring, then you don't know the whole story. And someday when it all comes out, they're going to have to rewrite every history book. And uh, that will be an interesting time for the world. My name is John Lowengard. I'm recording this because we may not live through the night. They're here, they're hostile, and powerful people don't want you to know. History as we know it is alive.